Hi muckers, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing very, very, very well. Okay, I am currently in Manchester, which is crazy. If you know, I moved here very briefly and I'm now back in Brighton again. Um, but I'm up visiting my apartment, uh, basically making sure that everything's okay. Unfortunately, I am renting this place until October. So I've just came up to the city for a few days. I'm also going to see Girls Aloud tonight and tomorrow. By the way, I'm aware that a majority of people that watch my videos probably don't know who Girls Aloud are because I, they're very big in, in the UK and Ireland. If you know who Girls Aloud are, please comment down below. I'm so excited to see them tonight and tomorrow night in um, AO Arena. Also, I got my nails done and I got nail art for the first time. I got little flowers. Look how cute! My nail tech in Manchester never misses. The one thing I'll always love about Manchester is the nail art up here. Anyways, okay, so I wasn't gonna film videos while I was up here because I have videos ready to go, but I needed to talk about this. So, uh, Jeff Wittick went on uh, Tana's podcast, um, or they went on, vice versa, sorry, and they were talking about a lot of topics ranging from James Charles to David Dobrik, and it's, they were really, really, really opening up, and it's actually nice seeing Tana Mojo talk more freely about bad things that James Charles does because if you remember the H3 show when she was like, she says she wasn't, but she appeared very drunk and, you know, slurry. And she was defending James Charles and it was a very awkward, awkward watch. And so many H3 fans were complaining about it. Ethan was, you know, not loving it. It was, she was basically going on the line of, you know, I'm not friends with James, but that is because I don't want to denounce him again. We had, And then Ethan's like, yeah, but he has done all these things to minors. And Tana's like, but yeah, but you know, I just don't want to be involved in drama anymore. And she got a lot of criticism from that. So Jeff Wittick and Tan are having a conversation about James Charles and David Dobrik. And it's really one of the first times in a long time that Tan Mojo is kind of acknowledging what James Charles has been accused of. And this is because Jeff Wittick is talking about his experiences with James Charles. Now, if you're not aware, Jeff Wittick and the Vlog Squad together um, used to make these collab videos with different YouTubers and James Charles was one of them. And James Charles always in these videos would, you know, make a lot of jokes, I guess, about wanting to be with Jeff, you know, turning Jeff, um, who's a straight man. And it was very much so this big thing where James was, you know, trying to sleep with Jeff Wittick. And a lot of people in the moment loved the jokes. A lot of people didn't love the jokes. And Jeff is speaking up now basically saying that it went past the videos that apparently James Charles was reaching out to him privately to hang out and, you know, was trying to do like movie dates, which ultimately leads to like a little bit of like a Netflix and chill and Jeff Wittick's a straight man. And, and then that's the first part of the video. And then the second part of the video that we need to talk about is they're talking about David Dobrik and Jeff Wittick actually says that Natalie used to forge his signature. Now, this is why I needed to come on here immediately and film a video because so much with the David Dobrik situation, we're not aware of because we know that it's going to be going to lawsuits, court. So there's a lot of information that Jeff Wittick doesn't bring to the public because I'm aware like it's going to be a harder hit in a lawsuit, whether, you know, so it doesn't go public before that. And obviously, David Dobrik doesn't even mention Jeff's name anymore. Um, and a lot of people have their opinions of Natalie. A lot of people like to, like, infantilize Natalie in a way. Um, she's David Dobrik's, like, best friend slash assistant. I've always thought she was shady. And now we're hearing it that uh, her entire job is just to cover up the bad things that David Dobrik has done. And here we're seeing it where Jeff is literally accusing her of, like, forging his signature. And I'm, I'm not going to speak for her. He's going to say it. Um, but anyways, we're getting two big updates in this. Number one about James and then number two about David. Now, let me go grab a drink actually. Now, the really interesting thing in this is I don't know what kind of videos you all watch online, but there has been a lot of people online right now talking about um, Dramageddon with Bi Sister. We're currently doing a revisit on my channel as well. It's been the five years. And you know, there's been the fourth year, third year, second year, first year, you know, of my sister and holding myself accountable and James Charles being accused really for the first time about, you know, predatory behavior. It's really ramped up this year for the fifth year anniversary. And I was trying to figure out why. And then I realized that a big reason for it is actually to do with drama channels. Now, I just keep thinking of Shane Dawson being like, cause you were messaging drama channels. <laughs> So just a little heads up, we're going to be revisiting all the videos over the next few days. I've already filmed them all and I'm just going to be like, hello, sporadically putting them on my YouTube channel. Um, but we have people like Dustin Daly, you know, Paige Christie, P. 
Peter Mon releasing these videos now where they're talking about, you know, what they know from that time period of, um, you know, the people that were involved in drama again. And it's really interesting. Peter posted a really interesting video. And also if you don't follow Paige Christie on Twitter, oh my God, there's a lot going on there. So this conversation about James Charles, you know, and all the allegations is definitely coming up again. And I feel like with these influencers that get accused of these things, it will, they'll never not exist within the allegations that they have been dealt with because most of them nine out of ten of them have never addressed it properly and if you don't address something properly it will continue to come up and i think the perfect person example of this is shane dawson he's even said himself every two years i get cancelled yeah because he never fully addressed the things so it'll always come up and people don't have the fault so anyway let's get to this jeff wittick and he used to text me shit like i want you to come over and watch a movie do you know james charles he preys on young straight men and he used to text me shit like i want you to come over and watch a movie and i'm like where are you getting these vibes from that i'm that like i'm that type. also shout out to um spill some tea with me on tiktok you know i love you if it was not for you all of the drama channels in this day and age would be unemployed so love you lots um thank you for always being on it um no that's initially messaging someone and saying do you want to come over for a movie is something that inherently is sexual. Now it's contextual because a little fun fact, whenever I was newly moved to Brighton, you know, like four years ago, I got invited over for a movie date and I thought, okay, great. We're just going to watch a movie. And then I was shocked at the fact that that me agreeing to go to that implied that I wanted to have sex. I genuinely, call me stupid, I didn't know that that was what that meant. Um, I had always heard about Netflix and chill. I thought it was just a joke. Like, I didn't think it, we were actually that serious about it. So messaging someone that you have flirted with or that you have gone on dates with or, you know, there's like a little bit of like an awkwardness there. If you message, like, come over and watch movies or whatever, and it's a one-on-one, -on -one, what I have now learned is that inherently that means sex. Or inherently that means cuddling or kissing or or something sexual. I I don't like saying that, but realistically, and obviously there's exceptions and you can be doing it with friends and stuff, but within this context of James Charles being like, did Jeff Wittick on his own come over and watch a movie? James Charles in that is trying to have sex with Jeff Wittick or Jeff Wittick's trying, you know, he's trying to other way about. Um, so that's awkward. That's awkward. Like Jeff Wittick is a straight man. And it's, there are stereotypes that follow the gay community of preying on straight men or only wanting straight men. And when gay men feed into that, it makes the rest of us who can handle ourselves look awful. Like I, I, there's nothing that bothers me more than a gay who feeds into a stereotype and then the rest of us all go down with it. Mm -mm. Jeff, we're not all like this, babe. A type of guy at all that, that would do that. But it's so crazy how many, like, gays I... Is Tana's microphone in the water? Her cable is in the water. Girl, you're going to be talking and then you're just going to go... Zzz, zzz, zzz. No, no in LA that are like that. Like, I've, I've never really, like, psychologically unpacked the thought process of, like, is it wrong as a gay? Like, even some of my close gay friends, how they'll, like, hit on you. Yeah. And they know you're straight. I never... But is there just a line of, like, it's it's fine if they jokingly hit on you, but if it gets too weird and you've denied it one time, then after that, obviously, it's, like, wrong. Right? Yep. Yep. Came to the conclusion. Yeah. There we go. So, like, he asked me to come over to his house and watch movies and shit, and he was texting me weird shit, and I was just like, Like, what else? What did he say? We, like, I never entertained it. And cut, my, cut my asshole here, Daddy. I wouldn't, like, it collabs with him because... I Not cut my asshole because Jeff's a barber. <laughs> Tana, please! I was trying to grow my career, and I, I relate to those Kevin Spacey guys. Mm. But at the end of the Kevin Spacey documentary, they're going to release a celebrity that's never spoken about it, mm. and he's a massive celebrity now. And that's, that's, that's like, like the cliffhanger for the end, and it's weekly episodes. We don't, so we don't know yet. We don't know yet. And at the end of it, somebody's gonna come out, and it, I think it's like, like who do you think it is? David Dobrik. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. No. I need to watch it. How did he make it? He didn't have any talent. How did he? It was his friends that fucking people like. Yeah, it's just sad. No, it's just. Look, David's charismatic. He's a piece of shit. 
That is really interesting and a very true point about David Dobrik. When you peel it back, David Dobrik didn't do anything in his videos. Like, he would do that, <laughs> that loud ass, annoying ass laugh. But he, his friends were what made him famous and his friends were the jokes and his friends were, you know, the punchlines and his friends were the actors. So for David Dobrik to nearly kill one of them, Jeff, who basically gave him the career in the first, like D Jeff, you could say that David gave Jeff a career, but if Jeff is the one performing in the videos, Jeff gave David a career. So let's call a spade a spade. Like David Dobrik is nothing, really. Sociopath. But I can see why people stuck by him because he, he was talented. He had a format that worked at the time. Yeah, now TikTok is basically what the vlogs were. I was thinking about this the other day with David, like with me, because I was thinking, it was like, I lived in David's house at one point, like Ontario View. Like I was close enough friends with David that it was like, I lived in his house, right? I was thinking to myself, I was like, what drew me to him? And what it was, I wonder if his friends also felt this way. It was like, I felt like David never really liked me or like really ever took the time to get to know me. And I used to love to like, chase yeah. some people's approval that I felt like were more successful than me. That's Hollywood. That's a media yeah. movement. People abusing their power and they know they can. When you get to a level of ego like that, you think you can do whatever the fuck you want. I know. It's so scary. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? You exist in the context of all in which you exist. Does anyone know that? You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? You exist in the context of all in which you live and what came before you. <laughs> like, I was so happy at that time in my life. I had this great group of friends. We all shot content together. And then the fucking accident happened. Natalie forged my fucking accident report saying that I was driving the crane. Do you know that? Yes. Did I ever say that on the internet? What? We have never heard that before. He just said that Natalie forged his incident report saying that he was the one driving. Oh my God, when I do this, I look like I have no eyebrows. Is this Jeffree Star approved? Oh my God, so Natalie... These people are scary. Scary. Like really, 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 that is scary. How are we only finding this out now? Obviously, things have been kept for us for, for a certain reason, but like... Publicly? I don't, I don't think so. so. Should probably save for court. Yeah, how does that... So he can just keep paying to like elongate the court time? Yeah, he's, he's, he's fucking off and just getting fucked up already. It's just crazy what people... Like what money really can do. Because I just found out that like even that P. Diddy video, he paid the hotel $50,000 to never release it. Like, And 50 bands to P. Diddy is like $5. Like it's like the same... You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's just money and power. Such crazy like, drugs. Yeah, and I had... It's scary that really realistically like... One sponsorship that David Dobrik does would be able to like delay the court for like a year because he gets so much money. It really is so crazy how if you have money in this world, you're favored. You can basically get out of anything. Um, you avoid accountability, repercussions. It's we need to like dismantle it like one by one, one by fucking one. Um, I had his back after because. You know, like, he he was a, a charismatic, like, guy, and he was a good, like, a, I, I'm not a, a good, I guess you were, whatever, I don't know. I just want Baby Reindeer show on Netflix, and at the end of the show, the guy, like, he, go, he goes back to, like, his abuser, essentially, and I was thinking to myself about, even just times of my life or certain things like that, I think that people see abuse or toxic relationships from the outside, presume that it's so easy to cut and dry, walk away from a situation. But, like, a lot of times in relationships you have with abusers, like, it's not, like, just one day you're, like, oh, goodbye. Like, you go back or you still have these these patterns where it's, like, you know what I mean? Like, you were still trying to be friends with him or wanting whatever it was. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's I, I can tell you exactly where it changed. Mm -hmm. After the article of the sexual assault that came out and was, like, David was, like, I'm going to go down with the ship, I tried defending him you know i was like i went on h3 and made the most embarrassing interview of my life oh my god i remember when jeff went on frenemies 
and it was an emergency live, I'm pretty sure, and Trisha and Ethan were sitting there drilling him, making him look like such a fool. Jeff was so incoherent during it. I remember watching it with my brother and my mother, and we were just like, what happens next? It was very clear that Jeff had this un, like, untouchable loyalty to David. And if that had not happened, if as embarrassing as it was for Jeff, and it was, if Trisha Paytas had not brought up the accident, I don't know if it would have ever came out. Trisha Paytas being chronically online and chronically obsessed with the vlog squad is one of the main reasons of Dan David Dobrik's downfall. Because she brought up the accident because she had been obsessively, you know, deep diving David and Jason and all the vlog squad on Reddit because she hated them. However, Trisha Paytas being chronically online and crazy insane actually led to something really fucking good. The downfall of David Dobrik and exposing what he had done to Jeff. So sometimes it pays to be crazy and chronically online. <laughs> If it eventually turned into something good and it became, you know, Jeff of him. And yeah. we have a great relationship now and he opened my eyes to, yeah. <laughs> There's kind of still two in there. But just seeing the way he felt about it, like you knew about this situation a week after it happened. And we're all part of your crew and you don't tell any of us? Are we like lesser people than you that you can't fill us in on a girl was assaulted david's excuse was oh she just wants clout and he said the same shit about me so, so i know like that girl what happened to her is way worse than what happened to me she has to live with that but she was anonymous she didn't want clout she put a fake name in that article Mm. And you knew, and you never fucking told us. I think it's a very just easy narcissistic abuser scapegoat. Not to keep bringing it back to that diggy shit, but he literally, until this video of him beating her came out, was saying, like, she just wants money, yada, yada, yada. But then it was like the video came out, so he had to apologize. You know what and I mean? It's, like, yeah. it's, it's just... Like, it's scary how many people will believe people like Diddy and David Dobrik when they're so persistent on people, you know, like lying for clout. And then something will come out that completely changes it and proves that these people were telling the truth. And then everyone's like, oh my God. And it's like, what if that never came out? Then you would have never believed them. It's like the textbook narcissist scapegoat. You could see it in their- They just want fame, they just want clout. Yeah, you could see it in their apology videos. David stopped doing the podcast because you could see through him that nothing he's saying is real. Mm. We're in a hot tub talking about fucking <laughs> the craziest shit. It's, always, it's, so, it's so funny, funny I imagined today. I was like, we're, we're shooting in Hawaii. We're going to have the most like peaceful podcast. Like, like they're so Hawaiian. And then we just did the same shit on canceled. Like just immediately like, nah, we're going it's the off. same thing. Just also, final point. It's really freaking me out how they literally just, again, have the cables in the water. Please. Okay, the James Charles thing, number one, is really topical right now with everyone talking about James Charles and what he has done online. And two, with David Dobrik, he's the worst. But I really would love for the conversation to start focusing on Natalie soon as well, because Natalie's involvement in this is something that people don't really talk about. And we have now been told that she forged David or that she forged Jeff's letter, that he was actually the one in the wrong. Like, these people are all crazy and they go to crazy extremes to defend David Dobrik. Muckers, I needed to come on here and immediately film on this. Let's talk about it down below. I appreciate you being here and goodbye.